Okay, just doing some receiver checks here. That's the commercial radio. 700 hertz down from the actual transmit frequency. I know that because when you go to transmit, it jumps up to 3K. And this is our receiver. And we'll talk about this in a sec. When you go CQ again, we'll pick them up on our one. Over the back here, there it is. Okay. Not quite sure if that came through or not, but um, definitely receiving him loud and clear on the on the uh, on the small radio here. So what we've done is we've uh, just mocked up on a separate board off to the side um, the receiver circuit just to just to do some testing. So um, hopefully that camera there was not too bad. So we've got the RF coming in here from the antenna. Yeah, just basically coming through here. Both about the same frequency. We come back up to commercial radio. Okay. Anyway, um, so what we've done here? Let me just turn the volume down. Uh, bandpass filter here for um, seven megahertz. Um, I'll do another video which talks a bit more in, in terms of details. This is just one on sort of experiments. Uh, that the, the the actual circuit there uses the um, the larger um, toy roids, but I've opted to use. Um, the smaller ones just to keep the size down. So the actual, the actual, uh, um, uh, the actual um, bandpass filter itself should have been using. Let me just double check here. The T68-6. So I've just used these smaller um, T50-6s just to to make things a bit smaller. So, uh, like I say, I'll do another video which talks a bit more about that one. But just basically did the conversion between the larger and the smaller toroid um, to make that bandpass filter. Uh, into a, an, an IEF amplifier, say again the RF amplifier, that's the same amplifier that we looked at um, in the previous video, um, into an SBL1. Of interest, those smaller um, ADE1 mixes I got did not perform at all, um, which is interesting. Um, they say ADE-1, but I provide them with plus 7 dBm, um, drive um, exactly the same setup as the SBL one, and the, the radio was 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 very very deaf, just just really nothing coming through at all. So I'm I'm just wondering if because they were so cheap off um, Alibaba that they're actually dash twenty fours. They're actually a, a specialist component. Um, I don't know that for sure, but what I do want to do is some um, some experiments tomorrow. Uh, as a direct conversion receiver so driving this directly from RF coming in and AF coming out i.e. like I say a direct conversion receiver and just see what's going on with that but uh, as soon as I took those out of the circuit and put in the SBL1s everything came back to um, what I expected so that's of interest so coming out of the SBL1 into another IF amplifier here um, that IF amplifier, um, from the core point of view, the amplification and the biasing point of view, is exactly the same as the RF amplifier, just elected to use exactly the same values. Um, however, the input transformer, and if you just look down there, the output transformer, um, have been uh, adjusted to suit um, the input and output impedance. For example, the output of the SBL1 is 50 ohms, so I'm presenting a conversion there from 50 ohms up to the input impedance of around 180 odd ohms for um, that particular transistor there. Um, you recall, as quite rightly pointed out, the, the input resistance that I put on in the, uh, the previous video, I neglected to put in the beta times RE. Um, so that's, like I say, so that presents um, an input impedance or resistance of around 180 odd ohms. The output is 200 ohms that we want to present to the collector, up to 500 ohms. Um, if anybody knows what the proper impedance is for an XF90C, um, please let me know. Um, I've searched high and low on the internet um, and I really can't work it out. Um, I've checked various circuit diagrams that use that particular um, crystal. 
so again air crystal filter and I really can't work out quite what's going on um, the output of that goes into another IF amplifier again exactly the same design but now where our uh, transformer there is from 500 ohms um, to 180 ohms the output is then 200 ohms to 50 ohms for the SBL1 and the output of the SBL1 is going straight into um, that AF amplifier um, that we saw on the um, in a previous video um, through that 51 ohm uh, resistor that should hopefully be terminating that in roughly about the right impedance. Um, and then uh, just just for test purposes here, a couple of fly leads um, for that uh, feedback resistor between pin six back to pin two. Um, and then that's just a 10k pot with a with an additional 10k resistor there that I can put across in parallel to to drop that down to roughly 5k ohm. Um, and this one here is just uh, it's just not in circuit. It's not being used at all. Um, uh, well, in fact, it is, but I need to bypass that. But that's the uh, the main gain determining device. Um, but yeah, it seems to be working quite well. Um, no, no major problems. Still need to do you know, some tests to work out um, if I can just sort of determine its sensitivity in that. Uh, I, I don't think I'll be playing around with these transformers at this stage of the game um, unless I can work out what the proper impedance is for that uh, that CW filter. But certainly at this stage of the game, it seems to be working quite well um, as a receiver. So the next thing I uh, like I say I think I'll do some more experiments with these little um, AD-1s try and work out what may or may not be going wrong with those um, I'm pretty sure I've got them configured correctly so um, don't know I don't know why they're not performing very well but certainly for the real estate that I've got to play with on this radio here as you can see I need to squeeze all of these circuits up here into this area uh, around here which I'm pretty sure it will fit. The two SBL ones I'll probably fit down here with a small shield in between. Um, and then the two IF amplifiers I've made uh, size wise to fit just down here. So one here, one on the other side, and then the uh, AF amplifier over here will squeeze down uh, just in here um, with the um, headphone jack um, just poking up from here. Anyway, so uh, just to, like I say, just a quick video just to, to sort of show the. Um, the experiments with the receiver um, and just doing some comparisons between uh, this configuration here and the little commercial rig just to see um, how the comparisons are. Um, for interest sake, like I say, I'll do, I'll do another video with more details. Um, this The center frequency for this crystal filter is 8999.3 so what I'm doing for the, um, the, the red wire here which is taking our uh, VFO input from the SI5351 um, I'm doing high side injection so um, if we just pick on a frequency of um, say 7 megahertz uh, coming in then what I'm producing for the uh, VFO coming in is 7 megahertz plus 8999.3 kilohertz um, so when it's mixed here um, the difference frequency between that VFO coming in and our 7 megahertz produces uh, an IF coming through here of 899.3 kilohertz. Coming out the other side uh, then mixing again with um, 9 megs um, to recover our, our 700 hertz um, audio frequency which then goes through the audio filter, so again the audio amplifier. Uh, and that seems to work quite well. Um, a different arrangement from the commercial rig up here where uh, to get the 700 Hertz tone you have to tune down below their frequency by 700 Hertz and when, when you go to transmit uh, the VFO then is clocked up another 700 Hertz to produce the output frequency um, to be the same as what they were transmitting but a slightly different arrangement here. Anyway, um, enough rambling. Um, I'll continue playing here, but uh, just want, like I say, do a quick video just to sort of show that um, things are progressing along, and and once things sort of get a little bit more refined, I'll put another video up, sort of looking at um, some of the final configurations. Okay, 73 is all. Um, take care, and uh, we'll see you next time.